Hey everybody, for this video I thought I would talk a little bit about the hot button topic of the Donald Trump campaign. Donald Trump has created quite a stir in the mainstream media, and there seems to be no middle ground. It's either people love him or they hate him. He seems to be doing his part to break the politically correct stranglehold that has gripped this country by the throat. And because of this, many people are siding with him. Many evangelical voters are siding with him, and also many in the alternative media scene. Big time alternative radio hosts like Alex Jones are pushing Trump big time, mainly because of clips like this. Uh, and now they're faced with a very real prospect of Donald Trump becoming the leader of the party, and it absolutely drives them crazy. Uh, they just cannot Why? imagine sharing. Well, because he's an outsider. He's not them. He's not part of the club. He's uncontrollable. Uh, you know, he hasn't been through the initiation rights. He didn't belong to the secret society. Um, and I think that they, they don't see him. They have no idea how to relate to him. This little piece of inside information from Newt Gingrich comes straight out of one of my last videos entitled, Is the Truth Movement a Deception? Which is linked up here. And I suggest you watch it after this one. Is it true that many high political powers in this country come out of secret societies? Well, yes, that is true. Newt Gingrich himself has attended the Bohemian Grove Society displayed here in this clip, where they worship and party under a giant stone owl. But has he really changed his heart about his former ways? To me, it seems that it is far more likely that he is simply mentioning these secret societies so that those in the alternative media will side with Trump. The alternative media, and those in the truth movement, want to get rid of these secret societies. They believe these people actually control the world, and they need to go. But do these secret societies truly control the world? The answer to that is a resounding no, and we'll cover this in a moment. First off, let's put aside the great possibility that Trump is also a part of this global elite, simply pretending to be one of us. Let's instead focus on something nobody is talking about in any serious way. Do you see this number right here? This is the current national debt. If you go to one of the websites linked below, you will see that this number jumps up at a rate of about $100,000 a second. Who is going to fix this problem? Is it Trump? No, he will only increase this number by trillions of dollars with his big plans for the country. Will Ted Cruz be any different? Nope. How about Bernie Sanders? Nope. And of course, Hillary Clinton will likewise be just as bad if she somehow escapes the Benghazi scandal, that is. If you check out her website, you'll notice that the national debt isn't even one of her major concerns. So, what does this mean? Well, it means that soon the country is going to go bankrupt. And all these candidates seem to want to do is to speed up the process. Yes, your hard-earned money is soon going to be useless, which is something that has happened in many countries in years past. Most recently, it happened in Greece. Do we somehow think we are immune? We are not immune, and if you think we are, then you have your head so far in the sand that the only thing showing is your shoes. A trillion dollars is a lot of money, and 19 trillion is a whole lot of money. So what are we supposed to do to prepare for this collapse? Buy gold? This is what people keep saying. What is this, a cartoon? Maybe that would work for a pirate, but this is reality. Who is going to help us out here? Is it the government? Probably not if you consider how we got into this mess. There are no top government officials to help. So how are you going to support your family when soon your money won't be able to buy a loaf of bread? To set up the answer, let me ask you a question. Do you know the number one reason why we are in this mess in the first place? Some people think it's secret societies, bad investments, corrupt political systems, etc. Well, let me read a little piece of text and see if it doesn't pretty much describe what's going on around us. The text reads like this. But if you will not listen to me and will not do all these commandments, if you spurn my statutes and if your soul abhors my rules so that you will not do all my commandments but break my covenant, then I will do this to you. I will visit you with panic with wasting disease and fever that consumes the eyes and makes the heart ache. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be struck down before your enemies. Those who hate you shall rule over you, 
and you shall flee when none pursues you. Kind of sounds like the position we're in as a country. Think about the wasting disease that has been climbing since the 1950s and on. Cancer, heart disease, and we now deal with super viruses. And let's not also forget super bugs. 50 years ago, this was not the case. Our country is plagued with disease and illness. It also seems true that those who hate us rule over us. If this wasn't the case, then I don't think that each child now being born into this country would arrive already owing $40,000. And you shall flee when none pursues you? Kind of sounds like the war on terror. Has anyone ever considered the fact that we are not at war with an actual enemy? We are at war with a concept, a feeling. We are truly fleeing from no one. How about this piece of text? And I quote, Behold, I will feed this people with bitter food and give them poisonous water to drink. Kind of sounds like the situation we're in, doesn't it? I mean, with all the genetically modified foods, the additives and preservatives that give you cancer, and the public water poisoned by the added fluoride. Harvard has recently revealed that this water is poisoning us. If you don't think so, just check the back of your toothpaste. Believe it or not, those verses are straight out of the Bible. Do you know why they seem to mirror the United States? The reason being is that they describe the cost of falling away from God. Now, if you don't believe in God, then I will also suggest you go and look through some of my past videos. Getting back to this issue, the Bible predicts the state of a nation that turns their back on God. In Psalm 917, it says, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. Has this nation been working on forgetting the God it once knew? Absolutely. We must realize that in the days of George Washington, this nation actually made a covenant with God. By some of our more famous documents, we are all supposed to be created equal, endowed by our Creator. We used to think highly of many familiar sayings such as, God bless America, in God we trust, one nation under God. Look where we are now as a nation. According to a survey by the Barner Group, most of the quote-unquote Christians in this country do not even believe in the Holy Spirit. According to Christian theology, you have to actually have the Holy Spirit to be a Christian so I don't know how likely it is that you actually have a spirit that you don't even believe in. Not only that, but this country has played a big part in the mass killing of God's creations. Tried to redefine his definitions. Are modifying creation itself. And we are even trying to create man in our own image. Come to think of it, we also spend our lives watching shows that give out the very things that God said never to make. Exodus 20 verse 4 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Deuteronomy 4.16 says, Lest ye corrupt yourselves, and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female. These images are called idols, and God judges the nations who deal in them. If God actually exists, would we not expect judgment for things like this? It seems very likely to me, and this truly is the reason why the U.S. is in such bad shape. God is a reality, and the reality we live in is something that God created. Let me read the rest of the passage from the above line that talked about the poisoned food and water. It reads like this, Who is the man so wise that he can understand this? To whom is the mouth of the Lord spoken, that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined and laid waste like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? And the Lord says, Because they have forsaken my law that I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice or walked in accord with it, but have stubbornly fouled their own hearts, and have gone after the Baals, as their fathers taught them. Now, Baal was an ancient satanic idol that the Israelites forsook God for, which in turn brought judgment upon them. Did you know that recently there were big talks having to do with reconstructing the Temple of Baal in New York City? The New York Times article is linked below. 
As you can see, it seems that we are breaking every last straw that we can find. You know, Jesus said, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This is where the United States is at. The global elite, including Satan himself, do not truly rule the world. They only think they do. Do they have major influence? Yes, but only what God allows. God is the one who is really in control of the nation, and all nations. He removes kings and sets up kings. He truly reigns over the nations. And if we don't want to do the things he tells us to do, then we set up our house on sinking sand. So, is this country doomed? Sure looks like it. Are you doomed? Well, that depends. If you were to read the Bible, you would also notice that although God judges nations, he also deals individually. He sent his personal angels in to get Lot and his family when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, and he can give equal support to those that love him. God promises blessings to those that follow him, in this life and the next. If you think about it, a person can't have any security at all apart from that. Jesus came into the world to bring such security to those that invite him into their lives that death itself cannot kill you. Sounds pretty solid to me. So, if you want to attempt to turn this country around, then it seems that if the cause of the problem is forgetting God, then the solution is remembering him. This is how salvation comes to the nation. And if it doesn't, then at least yours can be secure. This is how we fight this problem. As it says in Deuteronomy, Only if you carefully obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe with care all these commandments which I command you today, for the Lord your God will bless you just as he promised you. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. So, not following God results in major borrowing. Well, that explains the 19 trillion. You see, we don't need to make our main goal exposing the plans of the secret societies. Although there is a place for that. Instead, we need to invite Jesus into our lives. Read what he wrote down, and then spread his message to those around us. We can't expect a fallen nation to get better without the help of God. And to attempt to fix everything but this foundational point is to simply mask symptoms without getting to the root cause. Haven't you ever noticed that we never learn? Haven't you ever noticed that history repeats itself over and over? Well, that's because we truly live in a fallen world. And a fallen world never does what it should to cure itself. We don't need to focus on Trump, Cruz, Sanders, or Clinton. We have to get to God. You have to get to God now. For the sake of yourself and your family, you need to reach out today. The situation is life and death because that is the only real choice you have before you. There's only one way to fix things, and that is because Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the truth. And the way of the truth means life. And we need to listen when the truth speaks.